Let's take a look at what goes into making a single video of one of my Let's Plays, from front to back, starting at recording and ending at the finished rendered video. To start with, the uh, first thing we gotta look at is how do you actually record the video? So first stage is gonna be recording, second stage is going to be editing it. I use OBS to record. It's typically used for live streaming, but it's also really effective at making local recordings. It's completely free, it's super flexible, it's just really a lovely program. The first thing you're going to want to do with OBS is configure it for local recordings. Uh, I'm going to put this link in the description along with any other links that I reference. Uh, this one is OBS Studio High Quality Recording and Multiple Audio Tracks Guide. Super useful. That will get you most of the way there. But there are a couple smaller things that it doesn't really mention that I want to talk about. I also really want to stress the importance of having multiple audio tracks. It is incredibly powerful for recordings. So when I record a Let's Play, I have the game audio go to one audio track and then I have my microphone audio go to a separate one, and that allows you to manipulate the, the microphone's audio completely separately from the game, so, you know, when you're doing editing, you can make the microphone louder or quieter as need be to make it fit within the game well. You can apply effects like noise removal and uh, compressor to your microphone without affecting the game audio. It's just super nice and super useful. So aside from that, two things I want to touch on that the guide doesn't really talk about. One is the recording format of your local recording is super important. I highly recommend going with MKV. So I used to actually use .mp4 for a very long time, and that was kind of a terrible idea because there's a very key flaw with a .mp4 file. The mp4 format relies on a header being written to the file at the very end of the recording. And what that means is that if the recording for some reason fails without finishing completely. For example, if OBS crashes, or if you run out of hard drive space, or if your computer crashes, it won't write that header to the end of the MP4, and that will render your entire recording completely useless. It will be unplayable, unusable, just you'll have gigabytes of garbage. And yes, I've had that happen multiple times for crashes and for running out of hard drive space. So that's why I highly recommend using the MKV format. Um, there's some pros and cons to MKV, the biggest and what makes it well worth it is the fact that it doesn't rely on that header at the end. So for some reason, any reason, it stops recording partway through. Everything that you've recorded up to that point will be playable and usable. The downside is that MKV is not as well supported in editing programs, but that's not too big of an issue because it just so happens OBS actually has a Remux ability built into it. So if you just go File, Remux Recordings, you can select an OBS recording and it will automatically Remux it to an MP4. So just select an MKV, press Remux, and it'll turn into an MP4. And in case you don't know what Remuxing is, um, the MKV and the MP4 formats, those are not actual video encoding formats. They're, they're container formats. They're things that just hold the video. So it's not in any way recompressing the video. It's extremely fast in that way. The audio and the video are exactly the same. It's just changing out the MKV container for the MP4 container. So it's super fast and really not that big of a deal. And the second thing is there's this option here for CPU usage preset. So it goes all the way from ultra fast to <laughs> placebo. I don't even want to know what that would be like. This is basically how hard your CPU is going to work to encode it. So all the way at the top, which is what I have it set at ultra fast means it's the lowest quality recording, but it's going to be the easiest on the CPU. Um, I think the default is either super fast or very fast. This basically controls how efficient your CPU is with regards to how good the video looks compared to the file size. So for any given file size, it will look better on a more CPU heavy setting. And that's pretty important for live streaming where you have a pretty limited bitrate. However, I definitely recommend going with the fastest and easiest on the CPU option for local recordings because the bitrate is not nearly as much of an issue with local recordings. You're going to be throwing a lot of bits at the video. So having it be a little bit less efficient is not a big deal, but it does use pretty dramatically less CPU. So definitely recommend ultra fast. The next thing I would highly recommend is the Info Writer plugin for OBS. And of course, there'll be a link in the description to this. This is a super useful tool. Basically what I use this for is it allows me to press a hotkey while I'm recording and it will mark the timestamp in a text file that I later use during the editing phase to figure out where I should make edits. So while I'm actually recording, you know, I might get to a point where I'm like, oh, I gotta walk all the way back to this other thing and I don't have anything to say, so I'm gonna cut here and then I'll come back once I reach my destination. So I'll just hit the hotkey at the beginning when I know that that's what I need to cut and then 
It'll mark it in the text file, and when I go to edit, I can reference that text file to figure out where to edit. Super helpful for avoiding the need to rewatch the entire video that you just recorded, because that would be very, very time consuming. So let me show you how that's configured. Uh, the Info Writer plugin, you just need to add it to the sources of any one of your scenes, and then I believe it works globally in any scene. So you can see I've got it here. It doesn't need to be active or anything, just needs to be there. And if you double click that, um, you can do stuff like tell it where to put the log file, uh, what kind of format you want it in, and probably the most important part, you can set which hotkey you want to have assigned to which text. So if I press hotkey 1, it will paste this text along with the timestamp. If I press hotkey 2, it'll paste to this text along with the timestamp. So that's the text, and if you go to settings in OBS and hotkeys and all the way to the bottom, um, here's the InfraWriter plugin. Now you can see two hotkey 1 have assigned mouse 4, which is one of the side buttons on my mouse, and hotkey 2 is mouse 5. So what that means is right now, if I press hotkey 1, I just pressed it. Notice at the timestamp right now, if you look down here, it's 3530 or so. So if I bring up the edit file, take a look at this, 3533, and it says cut. And if I press the other one, which should say check sound, just pressed it, should be 3548. And there it is. Well, 49, close enough. You can just effortlessly press those hotkeys while playing the game. Now with OBS configured, it's time to actually record. But just a little note, for every time you go to record an episode or record anything in OBS, you should probably have like a little pre-recording ritual to make absolutely sure that everything is okay before you go, because there is nothing worse than getting to the end of something you wanted to record only to find out that your mic wasn't actually recording, or OBS wasn't even recording, or just something was messed up. When I'm recording, I always have OBS on my second monitor, so it'll be over here like this. This is my second monitor on the right side, and then my main monitor is the actual game, so that way OBS is always visible while recording. Um, so I press the recording button, and then kind of get settled into the game like you're about to start recording, but look over at OBS and check a couple different things to make absolutely sure that everything's good. Make sure that this thing, this button here, is red, indicating that you are actually recording. Make sure that this recording timer down here is counting up, again, making sure that you're actually recording. Um, and also, especially, look at your microphone audio. You can see as I'm talking right now, this is going up and down. Always check that before you start recording. Again, just to make sure your microphone is actually recording. Something could very easily happen to make it not record normally. For example, I, at one point I unplugged and replugged in this microphone, and that made it stop recording. It was like considered a different device ID or something like that, so I had to configure it in OBS and select the new version of it. Also, just as an aside, I would recommend also having up your directory that your recording file is going into and actually bring it up after starting the recording and just make sure that the files are actually there. And the reason I say that is because I actually one time, only one time, I started a recording and everything was good. Like, you know, this was read, the recording was counting up in OBS. It turned out it wasn't actually writing a file for some reason. I realized that when I went to stop the recording and OBS just kind of hung up, it didn't actually stop. It just hung. And then I checked the directory and there was no file in there at all. So that'll leave you with the MKV file of the original recording, plus a text file with all of your timestamps. Um, then of course you want to remux the MKV to an MP4, which is what this is. Before I jump completely into the editing portion, I should explain that uh, this video that I'm using here to show you how I edit videos is actually a real episode that I just recorded today and have not edited. I figure, you know, best way to show you how I do this is to show you the real thing. Uh, but this is from episode 17 of Night in the Woods, which is a series that I haven't even started posting on my channel yet, so I'm going to try to keep the spoilers very, very minimal. You're not going to see very much of the actual video, so don't worry about that. So I use the Adobe Creative Cloud suite of tools to edit and render my videos. This is Premiere Pro, used to actually edit them, and I use Adobe Audition to process my microphone audio, and then I use Adobe Media Encoder to actually render the files. I don't want this to turn into like an Adobe Premiere tutorial or anything like that, so again I'm going to kind of skip over the little tiny details of how I'm using this program and just give you the higher level overview of my workflow. So let's jump into it. I've got the file in the timeline here. Uh, this top one is the video. This audio track right here is the game audio, and then this audio track right here is the microphone audio. Because again, we're recording in multiple audio tracks in OBS. So first thing I like to do is select the game's audio track 
and I like to normalize the max peak to zero decibels. That basically means you're making the track as loud as possible without clipping. Clipping produces sound artifacts and it's just a bad thing that you want to avoid. So make it as loud as possible without clipping. I do that. Alright, that's the game audio done. Now I'm going to need to do a lot more with the microphone audio because it is completely unprocessed. I'm going to select that and instead of upping the volume or anything like that, I want to apply some effects to it. So I right click it and I do Edit Clip in Adobe Edition. One of the super nice things about the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite is that there's a lot of really nice integration between the programs. So you don't have to like render out the audio and then open it in a totally separate program and then like get it back into Adobe Premiere. Instead, you can just directly right click it, say open, and as you can see, it just opens it in Adobe Edition. I can apply some effects and then save it and then it will just seamlessly transfer back to Adobe Premiere. So it's loading it up and there we go. So this is the whole waveform of the entire recording. Um, I have a preset here for the effects that I want to do. Voiceover all the way at the bottom. It's pretty simple. It's just an adaptive noise reduction, which just removes fan noise and things like that in the background. And then a single band compressor. So I apply that. Just about to finish applying the effect. 99. And there we go, completely applied. So then I just save the file and go back to Adobe Premiere. So back in Adobe Premiere, I do the same thing to the microphone audio that I did to the game audio at this point. Normalize max peak to zero, make it as loud as possible without clipping. Always start from the top and then lower things, that's what I tend to do. And you can also tell that this audio track for the microphone is a different color, indicating that it's from Adobe Edition instead of the original audio track. Now it's just about time to get editing. So first thing I do before I actually play anything to avoid blowing out my eardrums, I have the audio track mixer open here. Uh, this is the master audio volume, so I turn it down to like maybe minus 16 or so, just so the total volume is not too bad. And then um, I usually have a couple bass lines that I start with for like rough figures that will probably be about correct for the microphone and game audio. So this is the microphone volume. I usually do minus six decibels for that one. And then I think minus four should be good. I can adjust that if need be. So audio should be pretty close to good volumes and not gonna blow my eardrums out so I can start playing it. Right. Scrub around and all that. Okay, so on my second monitor, I always have open this. I should stress that these timestamps only have meaning so long as you don't move the video around until you've addressed every timestamp. So if you do this, for example, now those timestamps are all just completely offset and don't make any sense. So make sure the beginning of your video is all the way on the left side of the timeline because you want your timestamp here in Adobe Premiere to sync up exactly with what's here in these notes. So let's just go to the first one. Um, actually, the first one I don't even note here. The first edit I make is I want to edit everything before the start of the episode. So let's do that. Let's see. Test, 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 test. How we... So that's me testing the microphone. Welcome back to Night in the... There we go. So there's the start. So I go right here, right to where I start talking. And then I'm looking at this timestamp here that says 22. And I go back to the previous 22, roughly. And then cut that. So we have a one second transition now. Welcome back to night. There we go. All right, so that's the first edit. I'm not gonna show you every single edit, don't worry. I just wanna show you a couple representative examples. So the next one, which actually doesn't come up that often is check sound. Again, that's just a different hotkey in InfoWriter that I've attached a different text to. Uh, that's the hotkey I press when I don't necessarily wanna make a cut, but there might be something I need to do with the audio. Like maybe I wanna cut my microphone for some reason. So 342, there's something I need to address. 342. If I remember right, I think there was like a motorcycle going by at this time. So I'm going to isolate my microphone audio track and listen. Do I hear anything? Yeah, I heard it a little bit. So for that, it's not that big of a deal, but I'm just going to mute my microphone at this point to take care of this edit, and then I always write done next to it, move on to the next one. 951. So let's look what happens there. 951. Oh, that's me cutting out a loading screen. So, what a horrible dream. What a horrible dream. Some loading screen stuff, black screen. So I cut to like here. There we go. So now that one's done. Move on to the next one. So I've done some edits at this point. Uh, most of them have just been the basic, 
I'm just cutting out some like dead air where I'm traveling from place A to place B or a loading screen or something like that. But I want to show you something that I keep an eye out for when editing that comes up with this edit that I need to make at 4847, which is right about here. And that's that every single time I make an edit, um, I always make sure that I look at what I said like in the previous five seconds before the edit point and maybe about five seconds after because I want to make sure that they're, the flow of where it cuts is going to match up with how it's flowing uh, at the beginning of where it's going to cut to. And the reason for that is some edits are going to be because I messed up my words, right? Like I totally mispronounced something or just jumbled something up. And that's kind of what happened here. So this, this edit here, they kept talking about... So I'm reading this thing. They kept talking about... Then I'm presented with a choice here. Then I was going to choose this giant hole, but then I um, had to go away from the computer for a second. But the flow of... They kept talking about... And then editing to just, like, this giant hole wouldn't really have the right flow. So when I came back, I actually came back saying this line again. They kept talking about... I just know that from memory, but if I went ahead to the next time I start speaking, we will see that. They kept talking about this giant hole. See, flows a lot better. So I need to make sure when I edit that I don't include this line in, or I'll be saying it twice and it would be super weird. So... I'll cut to like right here. And then there, they kept talking about this giant hole. Okay, so I just finished addressing every one of these cuts. Again, making sure that I check what I was saying right before the cut and right after to make sure they're going to flow together. And again, you could move them together to actually play them back. But again, you don't really want to do that because it'll mess up your timestamps and make them inaccurate. So that's why I always keep things apart and just kind of think, let's see, did it make sense here? And does it make sense with what I'm about to say here? If so, then we're good. So those are all addressed. And just like the beginning, I don't put a timestamp at the very, very end. So I'll have the last thing that I say here, and then I want to cut the rest of this recording. This is me just stopping the recording, this dead air here. So 14 frames after is one second. Cut that, put a transition, and there we go. A little ride. So there's our fade out. Now you have something that looks like this, got all the gaps where I made the edits. And then I've got a little hotkey that just compresses those all together. And then also the beginning, got to delete that so that it actually compresses to the start. And you can see we have, looks like a 30 minute episode, almost exactly. So at this point, I'm most of the way done, but I still do some spot checks, right? I've made the basic edits. Now it's time for just a very quick second pass. Uh, mostly what my second pass is, is just looking at the audio volumes to make sure everything is mixed pretty well. So make sure you can hear the game audio, and you can hear my mic audio, and they're not too imbalanced or anything like that, so... So, let's play something like this. My kids are gonna be there. We'll have a sign they made. Oh, it's like, yeah, that sounds pretty good. You can hear me over everything, but you can hear the background stuff. Nothing's overpowering. Um kind of look at the waveform and look for exceptionally loud noises or anything like that. Like, no, that's that's fine. I'm not talking during those loud portions. Um, yeah. Whatever. Is that not a sad ending? It's like, yeah, okay. That looks good. So at this point, then I crank up the, the master volume all the way to the top. Since I'm not going to be listening to this back at this point, I'm going to render this. So this is where I send it from Adobe Premiere Pro over to Adobe Media Encoder. I just need to tweak the bitrate to the right thing that I want. Um, and the reason I use Adobe Media Encoder, um, you don't actually have to use that. I could just press the export button and it would directly render this video right now. But the problem is I wouldn't be able to really do anything else. It would be, you know, I'd have the entire entirety of Premiere Pro open rendering this file. And it would only render this one, it wouldn't be able to render multiple videos at the same time unattended. So if you queue it, it throws it into Adobe Media Encoder, which looks like this. Now we can close Adobe Premiere. So I just added it to the end of the queue here, and I accidentally named it the full name, not the acronym like I did the previous episodes. Whoops. Um, so yeah, this is my current queue. These are the, all the episodes I've recorded today. So the nice thing about this is I can just press the start button here, and it'll just render each one of these that came from Adobe Premiere Pro from the top to the bottom, completely unattended. So what I tend to do is, when I go to sleep, I leave my computer on and just start this render going and just leave it rendering overnight.
So there's a high level overview of my process of recording a single Let's Play episode from recording to the rendered video. I hope this was useful or maybe at least interesting and thanks for watching.